Uzbekistan is one of the world's most fascinating and mysterious countries. This Central Asian nation has a rich and diverse history, culture, and natural beauty that will blow your mind. This video will show some of the most shocking facts about Uzbekistan. Before we start, kindly like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notification bell for more videos. Uzbekistan is one of only two doubly landlocked countries in the world. This means landlocked countries surround it and have no sea access. The only other country in Europe that shares this status is Liechtenstein. Being doubly landlocked is a geographical curiosity and a challenge for the country's economy and development. Uzbekistan has to rely on its neighbors for transit routes and trade agreements, which can be costly and complicated. Uzbekistan also faces water scarcity and environmental issues, as it depends on the rivers flowing from neighboring countries' mountains. You must be wondering if there are any benefits to the double landlocking for Uzbekistan. But yes, there are advantages. The country has a stable and peaceful political situation, with no border disputes or conflicts with other countries. The country also has a rich and diverse natural landscape, with deserts, steppes, mountains and valleys. The country also has a lot of mineral resources, such as gold, uranium, copper and gas, which can boost its economic growth and development. Uzbekistan was at the heart of the ancient Silk Road, the trade route that connected China with Europe and the Middle East. Some of Uzbekistan's most famous and beautiful Silk Road cities include Samarkand, Bukhara and Kiva. These cities remain popular for their stunning architecture, cultural heritage and UNESCO World Heritage status. The Silk Road was a route for commerce and exchanging ideas, religions, arts and sciences. Uzbekistan witnessed the rise and fall of many empires and civilizations, from the Persians and the Greeks to the Mongols and the Timurids. The legacy of the Silk Road is still felt in the country's diverse and vibrant culture, which reflects the influences of Islam, Zoroastrianism, Buddhism and Christianity. Uzbekistan is home to one of the world's worst environmental disasters, the Aral Sea. Once the fourth largest lake in the world, the Aral Sea has shrunk by more than 90% since the 1960s due to diversifying its water sources for irrigation. The lake has become a toxic wasteland with high salinity levels, pollution and disease. The former fishing villages along the shore are now ghost towns and the local population suffers from various health problems. The Aral Sea disaster is a tragic example of human interference with nature and the consequences of unsustainable development. The loss of the lake has affected the region's ecology, economy, climate and culture. However, some efforts to restore and conserve the remaining parts of the lake have been put in place, such as the North Aral Sea project, which has increased the water level and improved the fish stocks. The Aral Sea disaster has also inspired some artistic and scientific endeavors, as well as some tourism activities. For example, a museum in Moynak, one of the former fishing ports, displays the history and artifacts of the lake and its people. There is also a documentary film called The Desert of Forbidden Art, which tells the story of a hidden collection of Soviet art preserved in a remote museum near the lake. Some tours offer visitors a chance to see the lake and its surroundings, such as the ship cemetery, where dozens of rusting vessels lie on the dry land. Uzbekistan is the world's second largest exporter of cotton after the United States. Cotton accounts for 17% of its exports and is a significant source of income for the country. However, the Uzbek government has faced criticism from human rights groups for their use of forced labor in cotton production, with around 1 million students, government employees and doctors being forced to pick cotton every year. Cotton, frequently called the white gold of Uzbekistan, as it has been a staple crop since the Soviet era. However, the cotton industry has also been a source of controversy and corruption, as it consumes a large amount of water and land and exploits the workers who have to endure harsh conditions and low wages. The Uzbek government has pledged to end the practice of forced labor and to reform the sector, but the progress has been slow and uneven. The cotton industry also has a significant impact on Uzbekistan's culture and identity. Cotton is a symbol of the country's history and heritage, as well as its pride and dignity. Cotton is also a part of everyday life and the traditions of the people, such as the national dress, the handicrafts and the festivals. For example, there is a holiday called Navruz, which marks the beginning of spring and the new year, where people wear new clothes made of cotton and celebrate with music, dance and food. 
Uzbekistan has a unique tradition of hospitality called Osh. Osh is a large communal meal, usually consisting of pilaf, a rice dish with meat and vegetables, and other dishes. Men prepare and serve Osh, and they eat it with the right hand. Osh is a symbol of friendship, respect, and generosity, and is often offered to guests, travelers, and neighbors. Osh is more than just a meal. It is a social event and a cultural ritual. Osh is usually cooked in a large cauldron over an open fire and can feed hundreds of people. The preparation and serving of Osh is an art form, and the men who cook it call themselves Oshpaz, or Masters of Osh. Osh is also associated with various occasions and celebrations such as weddings, birthdays, and holidays. Uzbekistan has a forgotten city that is the size of Monaco. That city is Ming Tepe, and archaeologists found it in 2019. Ming Tepe was once a thriving center of trade and culture, dating back to the 4th century BC. It was part of the Kushan Empire, which spanned from India to Central Asia. The city was left without anyone around the 8th century AD and buried under the sand for centuries. The city has revealed many artifacts such as coins, pottery, and statues that shed light on the ancient civilization that lived there. Ming Tepe is one of the largest and oldest archaeological sites in Uzbekistan and a potential treasure trove of information and discoveries. The city was on a strategic crossroad and was influenced by various cultures and religions, such as Buddhism, Zoroastrianism, and Manichaeism. The city also had a complex irrigation system, a citadel, and a temple. The excavation of Ming Tepe is still ongoing, and the archaeologists hope to uncover more secrets and mysteries of this lost city. Uzbekistan has a bizarre obsession with Guinness World Records. The country has set and broken many records, such as the largest national flag, the largest cake, the largest chessboard, the largest open-air theater, and the largest Quran. People see these records as wasteful, extravagant, and politically motivated, as the initiation came through the former president, Islam Karimov, who ruled the country with an iron fist for 27 years until his death in 2016. Some people see the Guinness World Records craze in Uzbekistan as a way of boosting the country's image and prestige, and by others as a distraction from the country's problems and challenges. The records have links to the country's history and culture, and pomp and ceremony are for celebrations. In Uzbekistan, some of the records have also raised questions about their authenticity, cost, and impact on the environment and society. Due to the way citizens of the country get the Guinness World Records, people are no longer as enthusiastic as they would have when there were not so many record holders. Uzbekistan has a mysterious lake that has so much human bones. The lake is Lake Chagan, and it came into existence by a nuclear explosion in 1965. The Soviet Union detonated a 140 kiloton bomb underground, creating a crater that filled with water. The lake is also known as the Atomic Lake or the Dead Lake, as it is highly radioactive and contains the remains of animals and humans that the blast killed. The lake is off-limits to the public, but some adventurous tourists have visited it at their own risk. Lake Chagan is part of the Soviet Union's nuclear testing program, which conducted over 450 nuclear tests in Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan between 1949 and 1989. The tests had devastating effects on the environment and the health of the people living nearby, causing radiation sickness, cancer, and birth defects. Lake Chagan is a grim reminder of the horrors of nuclear weapons and a warning for the future. Lake Chagan also has some scientific and ecological value, as it is a unique and rare site for studying the effects of nuclear explosions on the earth and the water. The lake has attracted some researchers and experts who have conducted various experiments and measurements on the lake and its surroundings. The lake also has some wildlife, such as fish, birds and plants, that have adapted to the harsh conditions and the high radiation levels. The lake is also a part of the Semipalatinsk test site, which is a candidate for the UNESCO World Heritage List as it represents the history and the legacy of the nuclear age. Uzbekistan has a national dish that the government bans. The dish is tanned to a lamb and it is a whole lamb roasted in a clay oven. The dish is a delicacy and a festive meal, but it is also very expensive and consumes a lot of wood. The government banned the dish in 2012, citing environmental and economic reasons. However, some people still cook and eat the dish illegally, risking fines and imprisonment. Tandoor lamb is a traditional dish that dates back to the nomadic tribes of Central Asia, who used to roast lamb in underground ovens. 
The dish is usually prepared for special occasions such as weddings, holidays and family gatherings. The dish is also a symbol of hospitality and generosity, as the host would offer the best part of the lamb to the guest of honor. The ban on tandoor lamb has been met with resistance and resentment by some people who see it as an attack on their culture and identity. Uzbekistan has a subway system that is a hidden art gallery. The Tashkent Metro, which opened in 1977, is one of the most beautiful and ornate subway systems in the world. Each station has a different theme and design, featuring mosaics, sculptures, chandeliers and marble. The stations are also named after famous figures and events in Uzbek history and culture. The Tashkent Metro was a state secret until 2018, when photography was finally allowed inside. The Tashkent Metro is also a showcase of the country's artistic and architectural achievements. The Metro was built during the Soviet era, and it reflects the socialist realism style, as well as the national and local motifs. The Metro is also a testament to the resilience and creativity of the people who built it despite the challenges of earthquakes, floods and shortages. The Metro is a source of pride and admiration for the citizens and visitors of Tashkent. Conclusion. And that's it. And we hope you enjoyed learning some of the most shocking facts about Uzbekistan. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel for more awesome content. Also, don't forget to comment below and let us know which facts surprised you the most. Thank you for watching and see you next time.